I spend a lot of time thinking about how we learn. I've read hundreds of books and articles on the subject and written scores of essays, and even a book attempting to summarize and synthesize expert perspectives on the best way to do that. But there's still a ton I don't know. So today, instead of offering answers, I'd like to pose some questions that I still have. Now, I'll try to frame each question in terms of a specific topic so it makes sense, but each likely speaks to a broader issue that impacts other skills and subjects, and that broader issue is often the thing that I have in mind. So here are my unanswered questions. Number one, when learning a broad subject, like history, how much time should be spent on retrieval practice versus new reading? So I've talked before about the value of retrieval practice over rereading. So give students an essay to read and they learn more when they practice free recall of the essay's contents than if they read it again. But the research here focuses on rereading the same essay or the same material. What about reading different material? If you're studying a broad topic like history, do you learn more from retrieval activities or reading many other books and sources? Number two, is it better to first watch a foreign language film with subtitles or without? Okay, say you're watching a film in a language you are learning. You aren't to the point where you can easily understand what's happening from the first viewing on its own. If you were going to watch more than once, should you watch with subtitles on the first viewing or the second viewing? Now, the argument for the first viewing would be that you'd understand the plot and thus could assimilate the language better on the second viewing. The argument for the second viewing is that you'd attend to the words better and process them for meaning if you were actually trying to understand them versus if you already knew what happened. Number three, should you start by struggling on challenging math problems or simply view the instructions? Now, this isn't just my question. It's a hotly debated area of educational research. Manu Kapoor's productive failure experiments argue in favor of presenting difficult-to-solve problems first. In contrast, others' experiments on cognitive load theory argue in favor of starting with explicit instructions and worked examples. Both theories support problem-solving as you gain expertise, as it provides a needed practice. But the question is whether beginners, who are unlikely to know the correct solution beforehand, benefit more from a problem-first or example-first approach. Number four, how many words in a new language should you study via flashcards? I'm a big fan of learning vocabulary with flashcards. At my peak, I had around 16,000 cards for Mandarin and several thousand for Korean and Macedonian each. Memorizing the central meaning of a word is much faster to do via flashcards than incidental exposure. Yet a flashcard only teaches you part of what you need to know about a word. You can't get a feel for when the word is likely to show up or what words it likely goes with, and you need to practice recognizing it and using it in context. So my hypothesis is that flashcards are useful, but only to a point. Common words are good to learn, but so are also some uncommon ones. But how far should you go? The most common 100, 1000, 9000 words? Should you focus on single core meanings or quiz yourself on variations? So for instance, should you have one card for the word divide or have cards for each of divide, division, divisive, and so on? Learning a new word incidentally is almost always slower than learning it deliberately, but still it has the added advantage of the complete context plus additional practice on some other words in that context. At some point, learning words in context will probably be more efficient than rote memorization. The question is where this trade-off point occurs. Number five, if you're learning to ski or snowboard, do you learn faster if you stick to the easy slopes and perfect your technique or take on the steepest slope you can comfortably manage? For cognitive skills, there's support for getting the method right from the beginning. If you learn a mathematics algorithm incorrectly, there are few opportunities to self-correct that knowledge later. However, there seems to be different schools of thought for physical skills. One school would argue for perfecting the correct technique before moving on. This is the view that sloppy technique is harder to fix later, and so it should be mastered before taking on harder challenges. Another school would argue that once you've intellectually understood the technique, you benefit more from practicing in difficult, varied situations rather than trying to use it perfectly in the easier setting. Yet those complex settings are also likely to introduce errors and mistakes and potentially lead to problems of long-term technique. Number six, how useful is learning academic computer science for being a successful programmer? So this is a question that I've had on my mind since my MIT challenge. 
On the one hand, knowledge of number theory, analysis of algorithms, and logic play a role in programming practice. On the other hand, who has ever sat down to prove the complexity class for a problem before they began working on it? The question of the relationship between academic theory and practical skills shows up in many fields. Opinions on the academic relevance range from, uh, of course you need to learn that, to nobody has ever used this on the job ever. So which is it? Possible answers include, well, it helps, but mostly with advanced work, not the entry-level work, where you would be getting a job right out of university. It helps with making the practical skills make sense, so it helps with future learning, even if it's not directly practical. It doesn't help much with programming, but it helps you land a job, so it's signaling. Or it's just less efficient than simply learning programming directly and not worrying so much about the theory. Number seven, do you gain greater chess proficiency by playing slower or faster games? So say you wanted to rapidly increase your chess score. Should you take a focus on longer games where there's more time to think out each move or faster games which have less time to think but you end up seeing more board positions for each hour spent playing? Now, I suspect that both ends have an extreme where the learning benefits break down, so spending a year per game or spending less than a second per move are probably not efficient, but where's the optimal point in between? While this question, of course, matters for chess, definitively answering it would say a lot about other skills which can be done at varying speeds and have trade-offs between how deeply you're thinking about the problem versus the quantity of exposure you're getting. Number eight. If you wanted to paint in a loose style, should you first learn to paint with tight control? So similar to playing chess fast and slow is the question of cultivating an artistic style. So suppose you wanted to paint in a loose or painterly fashion. Would it make sense to learn with greater control first? The argument for greater control is that much of what we like in skillful loose painting is that the artist can communicate much with an economy of movement and brushstrokes. Beginners can't do that, so they're actually better off learning the fundamentals and then loosening up as they get better. An analogy for this might be math. An experienced mathematician can simply shout out the answer to a complex question, whereas a beginner would actually need to sit down and do the calculations ploddingly by hand to get the same answer. Now, we would never expect that just by shouting out an answer randomly would be the way for the beginner to gain the expert's knowledge in mathematics. However, the argument for starting looser is that the skill of controlled painting is just different from looser works. So stylistically, an earlier focus on control may make it harder to develop a successful loose style later. So those were some of my unanswered questions, but what about yours? What are you unsure about in the process of learning? Do you have any opinions about the questions that I've posed? I'd love to hear your thoughts.